Well, the New England Foundation for the Arts um, help, and the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, they've been instrumental in helping us get across the country so that we can um, conduct a lot of interviews with Black Panther members and Young Lords members, um, as well as the children of the Black Panthers and the Young Lords, as well as local community members who maybe just weren't part of the parties but were impacted by it or have an opinion one way or another. Um, so we've been we've been making our rounds with the and that helps us a lot in our writing, you know, to understand uh, what what the movement was, who it is that we're writing, who it is that we're writing for, you know, going around to each of these states and cities, uh, we got to meet meet the players in each one of those and understand what were the problems in each of those places, and that's that's going to come through very heavy in the show is is an understanding for how different sides, you know, America's wide. <laughs> and, 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 and the problems in the east side of the United States are not necessarily the same problems going on in the west side or the south. Um, so, you know, you each, each chapter, they, they were called chapters, um, of these organizations had different struggles to face. Um, and that's what we're finding out in the interviews as we go to each state, is, is why were you fighting? You know, we know you were a Black Panther, but what were you fighting for? Or you were a young lord, what were you fighting for? You were a young lord, were you fighting for the same thing? No, you had problems with shoes, nobody had shoes, <laughs> you were giving shoes out, they were giving coats out, breakfast all around, you know, so the, these are the things that we're hearing. And then, you know, also in that we're hearing about the abuse that they received for doing their job. They were, they were very heavily guarded by the police Anytime anybody got out of line or anybody got close to getting out of line, the police were, you know, there to say, oh, that guy has so crossed the line. We got to take him out. And they did. And one thing I think which that surprised us but was the amount of love that they radiated um, and the connections that they want to make. Um, there's definitely is sort of a who do you know to introduce you to somebody and then once you're kind of in you're and they start to really talk to you and they relax there's a love there um, there's a love the true love for the community and actually a true love for the country and they just wanted to see things right um, and to be equal and um, that sense of love still lives in them deeply they've been deeply wounded but it's um it's a um, it's a um, it's a, it's a pleasure to actually sit down and talk to someone who's been through so much and to see that they're still, they want to connect to young people and they consider us young people and to hear their stories told in the right way and not made up from the media or anything like that. There is, um, especially in the communities we come from and in the, the sort of, the, I feel like the revolutionary activist circle, there's a level of blessings that you have to get in order to move forward. You're supposed to give your elders a certain amount of respect. So for us, you could read 20 books about the Black Panthers and get some articles on the Young Lords and see everything on YouTube, and that is very highly, and you can write a play. That is very disrespectful. To us, you have to talk to them. I mean, you definitely want that human connection, but it's also a real sign of respect. You know, like, they came and spoke to me to hear what I had to say. And they, they honored me and respected what we did enough to feel that they had to come speak to me. And it could be very intimidating, but they really respect the fact that you, can, you, you come to them face to face to really hear where they're coming from. Now, will we use everything they said? No, not necessarily. But that level of respect, I think, has uh, allowed us to have access to them in a real genuine way. Another thing is you have to understand that their their history hasn't been recorded properly. Um, there are, growing up, you know, you're told that they were a racist organization or that they were a nationalist organized group or that, you know, you, you, they were just painted it's to be these- terrorist has been yeah, thrown around too. They were just painted to be these horrible, horrible people, you know? Um, if you were to look at the uprisings in Berkeley, for instance, you don't look at that as horrible, horrible students who were trying to disrupt 
the you know the nature of education whatever you say these were you know they they were speaking out they wanted their voice to be heard but when you have a black panther doing the same thing at the same exact time period they were you know disruptors of you know american civilization and meanwhile as they were fighting for these uh deserved justices, there were also people fighting to stop them. Um, the FBI heavily infiltrated these groups and a lot of the bad rap that the Black Panthers and the Young Lords got for being violent criminals robbing banks was led by FBI agents who were in these groups who said, you know, okay, we should go kill somebody today, you know, and they would lead a group of youngsters to go and and commit a crime and rob a bank and, and then it comes out many years later, oh, the person who led that was actually an FBI agent.